Uh, happy Wednesday night. Here we are, another Wednesday night in our midweek prayer and worship. And uh, tonight is special as th this entire month we have been celebrating Clergy Appreciation Month and appreciating all the men and women of ministry that serve at Purpose Church. And we have, we've been blessed with some outstanding preaching and outstanding word from our clergy. And so on tonight, we want to continue with that process. And so we had, we had to do things a little bit different uh, with this individual minister. Everyone else has preached in-house because they are in Chicago. But this particular minister saw fit to move. She saw fit to move. Uh, so when I released our theme for the year, Open Doors and Opportunities, she literally took it literally and 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 physically and opened the door and took her opportunity and took flight to a whole nother state. And so she actually put uh, put her faith to action upon our theme for the year of Open Doors and Opportunity. And she's really been showing us what that actually really looks like. And so we've been blessed at Purpose Church to have uh, purpose members everywhere. That's why we use the tag Purpose Church everywhere because we have members everywhere uh, in Texas, in Memphis, in Arizona, in Las Vegas, uh, in Atlanta, all over the space. And so she's one of our new uh, members who have, who have shifted our ministry across the globe to Fort Worth, Texas. So tonight I want to introduce one who we appreciate. Um, who has been locked into the things of God and who has really stepped out on faith this last year and beyond this last year in her life and in her ministry. Tonight, I want to receive with us the word for tonight for our Clergy Appreciation Month from Minister Kelly Avery, all the way from Fort Worth, Texas, Purpose, Texas. Hey, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Sagavi the glory, Sagavi the glory. I'm not going to hold you guys long. So we're going to jump right in. <clears throat> so my um, scripture is coming from Ephesians 5, 16 and 17. And I am reading from the NLT. And it says, make most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. It says, make most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Amen. I'm going to pray. Father in heaven, I just thank you right now. God, I ask that you... Um, Move me and you elevate, God. God, spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me on tonight, God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh upon me, God. In the name of Jesus, amen. So um, with open doors and opportunities of our theme, um, from this, my theme is don't miss your opportunity. Don't miss your opportunity. Um, we are shown opportunities every single day, but I have asked myself, will we recognize when it comes? We miss our opportunities because of fear of failure. I know we all know that. Um, procrastination and other people's opinion. Um, everyone gets a chance for an opportunity. I believe when we miss an opportunity, it's not lost. It is meant for someone else to pick it up what you missed. We have allowed our faith prayer and discernment to know when God opened the doors and opportunity for us. Some doors might be good opportunity, but not necessarily best for us. Some of, some of us ask 
And we already know the answer from the Lord, because if the Lord, we get to this place, this space and this place where we, we know that's not the door. He, he opened the door, but it's not for you. That door is not for you. But we get to this place where we just say, okay, I'm a chance at, you know, I, I think I hear God. And, and we already know what the answer is. But we take that chance. We go through that door and know that that door is not for you. When you get inside, you discover that you should have followed your first bath. Mm -hmm. Meaning you should have been hearing the voice of the Lord. Because we have to be very, very careful of who we, we're hearing. Because we get so distracted and we have all these things going on in our ears. And we got to be in tune with the spirit. We got to make sure that the Lord is, um, you got to be sure that you are following his voice. Then now you begin to have a pity party because you know you should have went through that door. And then you're calling on others to pray for you. And then you're begging God to get you out of this, even though you know that you were wrong for going through that door. And the only person that can get you out that, out that, um, out of that hole is the person who told you not to get go into that door. So we got to be very, very careful of what we are hearing and what go comes into our ear gates because. The devil, he paints it real good for us. He paints it real good, but you got to make sure that you are listening to what he's telling you because he's preventing us from all these things, pain, hurt, frustration, aggravation, all of these things. But if we don't listen, that's what's going to happen. Amen. We have to remember that every opportunity is not your assignment. Every opportunity is not your assignment. We have to, people of God, this is real. We got to know that every opportunity is not our assignment. That's why most of us are frustrated because we're taking on something God did not even give you. He didn't even equip you for that. So we have to be very, very careful of the assignment that you pick up because it may not be for you. Amen. We got to be careful. God has something he wants each of us to do. We don't have to say yes to everything. And that's the problem. Every You want to, you can't be yes to everybody. It's okay to say no. You can, it's okay to say no. We have to get out of that. We, we want to carry on all this stuff and you wear yourself down. You can't do that. You can't, you can't be good to, to nobody else. If you're carrying all this weight, amen, you got to pick and choose your assignment. You have to listen to God and get the right assignment. Amen. We have to learn to evaluate, have to learn how to evaluate, evaluate your surroundings, evaluate um, um, your assignment, evaluate, um, making sure that this is what the Lord has said to you to get that assignment. Amen. And we have to pray, 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 pray. Can't say that enough. Can't stress that enough. We have to pray, 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 pray about any and every opportunity. Because again, as I said, every opportunity is good, but it's not necessary for you because it's not your assignment. Amen. We have to also be mindful 
who presents the opportunity to you because what work for that person may not work for you. So we have to be careful who's presenting these um, uh, presenting these assignments to you or wants you to do this and wants you to do that because it's every assignment, again, is not for you. It works. It may work for Pastor Pat. It may not work for me. So I can't pick up her assignment because she's a prophet. That's not my assignment. So I need to go another way because he has something for me. He has something for all of us. We just have to be willing and ready and listening to what our assignment is. Amen. This is how we get burned out because we take on assignments that is not for us. That's, that's it. That's all. We take on stuff that don't even belong to us. We miss our opportunity because of my first point is fear of failure. Fear of failure. Wow. We get in, we get in our own way because we think we are not equipped. And you got to know that when God gives you an assignment, and it comes directly from him, you are already equipped because he, he can trust you with that assignment. Amen. So don't listen to the chatter because if he gave it to you, it's all good. Amen. It's all good. We talk ourselves out of the opportunities. We worry about what others will say. We never know um, what we can handle until you try it. You got to try it. You got to try it. You got to try it. Mm -hmm. Because how you going to know that you can't do it until you try it? Amen. Um, if, if, if it turns out to be a failure, it's okay. It's okay. It's totally okay. You can learn from that experience and try it again. Get up, try it again. Amen. We all fall down, but we we uh we have to get up. We have to get up. And it's okay to fail, but that don't mean that you are a failure. Amen. For example, and I'm just being um, transparent. For an example, when I decided to trans transition to Fort Worth, things didn't go as planned. It didn't. It did not go as planned. And I'm, I'm not going to act like it, it was all good when I got here because it, it was not. It was not. I hit a rough patch. And of course, I began thinking, okay, God, did I do the right thing? Did I, that's when the enemy started playing in your head, saying, yeah, you failed, you did this, you, you, you're not going to succeed, you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that. But he's a lie. I will not be defeated. And I'm, I'm standing today. And I think I've been here four months. I'm good. And... And um, I remember, because um, Pastor Pat and I text basically mainly every day, and during that rough patch, she sent me a message, and you know, I just told her what I was feeling, and she said to me, "I still got the text today." She said um, she knew. Um, what I was feeling. And it's amazing how her and I connect as far as I know when she's feeling down and she knows when I'm down and, and it's like we tap into each other. And that's what I love about her. And, um, and, and she said, um, so I was feeling in a rough uh, moment. 
She said, you are where you're supposed to be. And she said, stay your behind right there. She said, stay the course and watch God keep his promise. My God. And he is keeping his promise. He is keeping his promise. And she reminded me that this was still a God move. I mean, we get to those spaces and places where we get distracted and um, we begin to um, hear the enemy talking to us. And we got to, you know, we got to keep speaking, um, <clears throat> keep speaking scriptures over us or even um, play a song that that can ease that pain. And and it was just just amazing. I just, you know, I love her for that. And um, she just kept reminding me that this is still a God move. And in saying this, if the opportunity comes from God, don't worry about fear of failing because he have equipped us for the assignment. Mm -hmm. He has equipped us for the assignment. In order to know um, the opportunity is from God requires us to have faith. I'm going to say that again. In order to know that an opportunity is from God, it requires us to have faith. We got to have faith, faith, faith. I can't stress that no, no further. Faith. We got to have faith. Um, my second point is procrastination. Woo. Yes, God. That is me. I own it. And I'm sure many of, many of you guys own it because I own procrastination. Yes. Um, Procrastination is affecting most of our lives because we are making excuses. Ooh. We are making excuses. Excuses after excuse after excuse. Just like when we say, oh, we're going to lose weight this week. We're going to go on a diet. And you know when you get home, you ain't getting on that treadmill. You ain't get on that treadmill. You you go you gonna grab something from 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 outside food because you won't feel like cooking. And we get in there, we start watching um, we start watching our little shows and and like <laughs> so you know procrastination. That's 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 the devil. Procrastination is the devil. We have other things. That is our priority. We have other things that is our priority. This reminds me of Luke 9, 59 through 62. And the word of God reads, he said to another man, follow me. But the man replied, Lord, first let me go and bury my father. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. 61 says, still another says, I will follow you, Lord, but that's the word to get us in trouble. But first, let me go back and say goodbye to my family. 62 says, Jesus replied, no one who puts his hands to the plow and looks back is fit for service, uh, uh, for service the kingdom of God. Wow. The things that we 
do um, to not uh, follow the instructions of the Lord. Because if the Lord tell you something, he's the only one who can tell you something. You better get up, get your butt up and go. Get up and go. Follow him. And Jesus was saying that it's easy when God comes upon us, we will not respond to it in that moment until we do things we need to do first. That is a no-no. That is definitely a no-no. That is definitely a no-no. We have to follow God. We have to follow him. He gave instructions. He gave instructions. He said, follow me. Follow me. And he had an excuse. He procrastinated. We just need to follow God. Follow him. Follow God. When God gives us instructions, our priority should be to follow his directive. Because it's, when you follow his directive, he got something good for you. It's something on the other side. But when you decide to shift and go another way, you can't hear him. You can't hear him. You cannot hear God. I mean, you, because you're being disobedient. You have to follow his directive. Amen. For example, here I have another transparent moment. Um, God have given me instructions to start writing. Have I started? Nope. Nope. I journal, but have I started writing? Nope. Um, but every day I make excuses. I'm owning it. I make excuses. I make excuses and I keep putting it off and I keep allowing um, others to distract, to distract me so, or hinder me from it. But we have to um, get out of that space and that place because if God gave you something and he promised it to you, it's going to happen, but you got to put action behind it. My God. You got to put action behind it because it's not going to fall in your lap. Yeah, he gave us promises. Yes, he did. But you got to put you got to put one foot in front of the other. You got to put action behind behind it because that's the only way it's going to work. It's, he's not just going to give it to you. So don't allow procrastination be that stump, stumbling block to keep you from missing your opportunity. Don't allow procrastination um, be that stumbling block to keep you from missing your opportunity. Because he gives us he gives us opportunity every single day. But you gotta know is it from him? Because remember when I said Every open door is good, but it's not for you. So we got to be careful and we have to, um, we have to be in tune with the spirit when he's talking. We got to keep the distractions away because that's the only way you're going to know if that assignment is for you. Another reason not to miss your opportunity is other people's opinion. Other people's opinion. We will always have others around that will 
have their opinion about what we should do. This is what drives me crazy because most of the people that give us opinion, and it's okay to have your opinion, but keep your opinion to yourself because if you haven't been in that situation, you can't tell me nothing. So we have to be very, very careful um, what we say to people um, because if we haven't been in that situation before, we don't know what we'll do. We don't know how that person is feeling. Cause some people they they just they just gotta say something, thinking it's it's all good. And and it may not be intentionally. It may not be intentionally, but we have to be very, very careful how we respond. Got to be careful how we respond because everybody is not have a have that um everybody is not hard or have that tough skin we have to be very very careful um when we're conversating with people because again everybody don't have that thick skin you have sensitive people um you have people that just will just pop off and and, and you may not even be doing it intentionally, but we just got to be careful how we respond to your opinion of other people. The most important thing to do is pray and listen to the voice of God. I can't stress that any further. We have to listen. We have to be still gotta be still got to be still and that's for your own good it's for your own good you have to be still you got to be still you got to be still and and hear him because that's the only way that you're gonna know and that's the only way that you won't miss that miss the assignment that he has for you. You got to listen. I know we have other things going on. And and I mean, I know, you know, um, there's distractions, but we have to, we got to get to a place where even if you have to just do it, set your alarm clock early in the morning, get up at 4.30 or five or whenever because I think I function best when when I'm praying is like four in the morning because you know everybody don't function like that so <laughs> so you got to um you got to you got to listen you got to listen at the end of the day it be um it's between you and God it's between you and God at the end of the day, it's between you and God because what he promised you, that's between you and him. Nobody else's opinions matter because if he promised it to you and he told you he was going to do it, he going to do it. So that's between you and him. So sometimes, and then another thing, we have to be careful who we share your information with. Jesus, you got to be careful who you share your information with. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Amen. Don't allow others, people's opinion um, for you to miss that opportunity um, that God has laid out for you. Don't, don't let other people's opinion make you miss that opportunity God had already told you about. Because it, it again, it don't matter what they say. Because if God told you and he promised it to you, he gonna do it. Amen. For example, when I decided to move here to Texas, I received a lot of negative energy, a lot of negative feedback. Um, it was mainly from family. 
It was mainly from family. It was mainly from family. And it's like, and I took it to heart, but I had to realize that um, what's best for me is for me. I, I only can live for Kelly, Monique, Avery. I can't live for nobody else. I only can live for me. I only can live for me and you only can live for you. You can't. So I had to block that out. I had to block it out because it, I've already prayed God I re released me. And guess what? He gave me the opportunity to move here. And just to think, if I was that weak, weak Kelly, I used to be back in the day, I'd have still been in Chicago struggling and weeping and crying. And I know that God had an assignment for me here in Texas. So don't miss that opportunity because, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Step out on faith. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because guess what? If it don't work, all you, all you can say is, I tried it. That's all you can say. I tried it. And go back. Or try another state. So nobody, other, other people's opinion doesn't even matter. So you don't worry about that. Amen. I pray and follow the voice of God. That's what I did. I followed the voice of God. I had to do what the Lord instructed me to do. And that's the problem. We don't want, we don't want to do, we don't want to follow. And that's what get us in trouble. We want to go into other doors and we want to go here and go there. No, follow his instructions. Follow his instructions. Follow his instructions. That's it. That's all. It's not hard. Um, again, if I had not did what the Lord told me to do to move, I'd have still been around. And who's to say when that next opportunity, God was going to open up that door for me. So again, other people's opinion does not matter. If the Lord gave it to you and told you and promised it to you, then that's where you go. You go in that direction. Nobody else matters. Nobody else matters. Because again, guess what? You don't know when that opportunity is. That God is going to open up that door again. You don't even know. It could be 10 years from now. It could be five. It could be two weeks. You don't know. You do not know. But I wasn't going to stay behind and figure it out and find out. So I did what I had to do. Amen. Your opportunity may look a certain way. Um, the way you think it should look, it's not going to look that way. So again, you have to um, remain prayerful, faithful. And you have to um, um, follow his instructions. And you have to step out on faith. Step out on faith. Follow God's instructions. And don't worry about if you think you can't handle it. If God presents an opportunity to you, then trust that you can handle it. He's not going to give you, <clears throat> he's not going to give you something that he uh, knows you're not ready for. That's not the kind of God we serve. He's not going to give you that. If it's something out of the ordinary, he's moving you out of your comfort zone. That's what a lot of us don't want to do. We don't want to be pushed out of our comfort zone. We want to stay right where we at. But you got you we have to um um most of us have to um we got too comfortable 
and it's time to move to another level. Who wants to stay on the same level? You shouldn't want to stay there because God has so much for us. Why you want to stay on the first floor and he want, he want you on the hundredth floor? You Come on now. Amen. So, um, so all I've been trying to say is don't miss your opportunity. Mm -hmm. Don't miss your opportunity. Remain prayerful, faithful, and listen to the voice of God. Listen to the voice of God. He will never steer you wrong. Amen. Thank you guys for jumping on. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. God bless you. I miss you guys so much. I miss you guys so, so much. I don't miss it. I don't miss Chicago, but I do miss y'all. Amen. Pastor, you can take it away. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that word by Minister Kelly Monique Avery. She said her whole name, her whole government name. Uh, awesome word. Don't miss your opportunity. Uh, we, we can't allow fear to miss our opportunity. We can't allow procrastination to miss our opportunity. And God knows we can't allow the opinion of other people to cause us to miss our opportunity. Why? Because at the end of the day, the only person who God is going to hold responsible for our opportunity is ourselves. And ultimately, when it's all said and done, we, we won't have anybody else to blame but ourselves if we miss our opportunities. Now, of course, some opportunities come back around and sometimes opportunities don't come back around. And so you don't want to take that chance and miss your own opportunity. And so we thank uh, Minister Kelly for such an awesome word, a powerful word, powerful teaching. Uh, she did an outstanding job on tonight, and we really, really appreciate her. Listen, let's continue to pray for her. Pray for her family. Uh, pray that God continues to move in their life, that he continues to open the next door in the next season of her life as well. Amen. Listen, there may be somebody here that you may not be saved, you may not be a part of a church family. I'm a living witness that Purpose Church is an awesome and a great place to be, whether it's Purpose Church online or Purpose Church in person. It doesn't matter where you are. You can connect to the kingdom of God by way of our church. And so you have any opportunity to connect with us and be a part of our ministry. You also have the opportunity to give and to sow to Purpose Church. You don't have to wait until Sunday morning to give or to sow. Just as you can worship, serve anywhere, you can also give anywhere as well by texting, um, by uh, going to our Facebook page, by Cash App. All the giving information is an opportunity is right there on the screen. And so we want you to take advantage of the ability to sow into kingdom building ministry as we continue to do outreach and as we continue to save souls for the kingdom of God. And so remember, if you want to be saved, you want to be connected to our church, or you just need prayer, inbox us. Uh, one of our ministers will respond to you and uh, pray for you and walk you through plans of salvation and all of those things as well. Listen, let's not forget before we close on Sunday, we want to ask number one, that, that you bring your hoodies to uh, worship to church as we donate hoodies to the homeless, those who are less fortunate than us. We're asking every member, every partner to donate a hoodie or two, gently used or brand new. We had a bunch of collections at church on this Sunday, and we want to continue to collect this Sunday as we be a blessing to other people as well. Amen. Listen, Sunday, Sunday, we wrap it up. We wrap up Clergy Appreciation Month on this coming Sunday. Um, as we um, close out with um, our very own minister, uh, evangelist Latasha Holden, she does a lot of does a lot of work behind the scenes. As a matter of fact, she's working tonight behind the scenes. She's doing a great job with our media ministry. But just as she does a great job with media ministry, she also has a word from the Lord. And so we are so excited that she will share on this Sunday at 9 a.m. in person 
at Purpose Church Worship. So listen, I want to encourage everybody to come to church Sunday. Grab a neighbor, grab a, fa a family member, put your mask on, social distance, and come to worship on this Sunday. I want to also send a clearing call out to every member whose face I have not seen uh, this last month or this entire time that we've been back in worship since June. There are some faces I have not seen. I want to see you on this Sunday. Your pastors want to see you. Listen, the best way you can show appreciation to your pastor on Pastor and Clergy Appreciation Month is your presence. Amen. Your presence and your prayers are the best sign of appreciation to your pastors during this time of Clergy Appreciation Month. So we want to see you this Sunday. Amen. Listen, let's give benediction and we'll we'll go home. Or we're, we're already at home, so we'll log off while we're at home. All right. God, we honor you. We thank you for the woman of God who came to share your word on tonight. We thank you for all those who participated and took part in this night of worship, this night of prayer, this night of, of word. God, we pray that you will look on Minister Kelly, that you will cover her and keep her and her family. God, we pray that you will bless her with all the resources and tools that she needs to be effective in this new opportunity and new season that she has walked into. We thank you, God, how you have used her to expand the kingdom of God and to, and to expand the, the, the borders and the coast of Purpose Church into a whole nother state. God, we thank you for our church. We thank you for every home that's represented here tonight. Be with us, cover us, and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. God bless you all. Good night. See you Sunday morning in person. Amen. Mm -hmm.